secretaries of the Ministry of Finance, the chief economic advisor, the president of the three chambers of commerce, who are all here, officials, uh, captains of industry, ladies and gentlemen. This government has now been in office uh, for a little over two years and eight months. And we've had an opportunity to present uh, four union budgets. And if you look at the changes which have come about in this period of two years and eight months in the four budgets, that budgets are no longer being looked at as an exercise where we merely tinker with some duties, but have actually become policy documents which guide the direction into which the country's economy is to move. Not only in these four budgets, but almost around the year, I can comfortably claim that every decision that the government has taken has been in the direction of uh, reforming and improving upon the present systems. Whether it was uh, to target subsidies to the more deserving, or it was to end discretions, or it was to ease the process of doing business, or rationalize taxes, or cleaning up the system. Each decision which we have taken can actually be termed as a reform in its own rights. And I think what is more important than that is that not a single decision have we taken which goes contrary to this larger roadmap that we are trying to follow. So as far as the direction is concerned, we are absolutely clear about it. The three changes that we made this year each one of them was dictated by good reasoning. Why did the railway budget have to be discontinued and merged with the union budget? It was uh, an exercise undertaken since 1924, a year in which the size of the railway budget was much bigger than the size of the union budget. Today, what we spend on national highways or what we spend on defense is bigger than what we spend on railways. And therefore, the rationale of continuing a separate budget for the railways and then packing it with populist announcements, uh, which historically were not implemented, was not considered uh, uh, a very useful exercise. So railways would be treated as any other infrastructure and service industry, which also requires to be improved, invested in, made more competitive, Advancing the date was uh, dictated by a reasoning that there was nothing sacrosanct about the 28th of uh, February. Earlier, the timing used to be 5 p.m. because it was linked to the GMT timing. And we continued that practice for almost 50 years. So the government had changed the timing and therefore the date had to be advanced because you wanted the expenditure to start in Q1 rather than wait for Q3 because of monsoons intervening. And so to the obliterating of this distinction between plan and non-planned expenditure, the overall approach in the budget really was that this was a year which we needed to improve upon our uh, spending, fully conscious of the fact that a bulk of the spending uh, has to come from the government. And that spending is really required to spur growth and create an environment in which eventually the private sector would also pick up. And our priorities were also very clear. We had to concentrate on uh, agriculture and the rural sector. We had to concentrate on infrastructure. 
we had to expand on the social sector schemes, particularly the more successful ones. And therefore, we went on that track. Almost everyone got uh, bigger grants. And then we were, of course, constrained by the factor that uh, we needed uh, to have fiscal prudence. So in a period of two years and eight months, it's not merely that uh, from 4.6, we've now come down to 3.2. I think what's also more important than maintaining the path of fiscal prudence is also the quality of that fiscal deficit. Today, there are no, the revenue department will tell you that there are no held up tax refunds. Today, we have not cut expenditure in order to maintain uh, the fiscal discipline. In fact, in the current year and the last year, consistently the revised estimates in the budget are higher than the budget estimates. And that's partly because in both years the revenue buoyancy has been about 17% each. Having said this, I think this budget uh, comes in the backdrop of certain important changes and reforms which have taken place. In the coming year, we await the GST and therefore only for a few months we saw no reasoning in uh, altering either the excise duties or the service tax because that will converge into the GST in the course of the year itself. The progress is significant. As far as uh, the demonetization is concerned, we must bear in mind that uh, whatever are the revenue and other gains of it may not have been fully factored in. Because as against the 17% growth in revenue in the last uh, two years, we actually put it at 12% this year, a target which we could surpass. This year our collections are higher than last, what we had anticipated and hopefully we'll maintain that cost even next year. The fact is that uh, we have a realistic target in mind and that really takes us to 3.2 and eventually 3% and in accordance with the fiscal roadmap that we've uh, planned ourselves. We've also carried on the reform process itself. We have a much higher target for disinvestment because uh, eventually more and more PSUs including the GIC companies are going to be listed this year. And in accordance with the listing requirements, uh, will require to divest a part of their equity also. Time has now come to abolish the FIPB because 90% of uh, the foreign direct investment coming into the country is as it is coming through the automatic route. And therefore, in the course of the year, we'll be laying out the entire roadmap for the FIPB abolition itself. We intend uh, listing several PSUs. It will make them, they are functioning more transparent, they make them more competitive. And a lot of values would then be known when they get listed onto the stock exchange. I have mentioned some of them. The taxation approach was also absolutely clear. Our steps against shadow economy would continue. And that's why we put this cap of 3 lakh rupees uh, on the cash transactions. Hopefully, once the GST is implemented, the scope for generation of more black money itself becomes more difficult. The curbs on expenditure being put uh, will uh, provide a check to the expenditure of that black money. And hopefully the steps which the revenues department has taken and the fallout of the demonetization, I think is significantly going the, to change the pattern 
of spending behavior as far as consumers are concerned. Normally, budgets are known for imposing higher taxations. But except for the surcharge in uh, the category which uh, Noshad doesn't like, I think there is an equity in the wealthier paying more. Because I have uh, also in the budget document consciously given some data to indicate uh, how much of a non-compliant society we are. And therefore, one of the efforts has been to make the society more compliant. Because if we seriously introspect, the data itself reveals, and if we keep those uh, 56 lakh salaried assessees out, the voluntary taxpayers above 5 lakhs, which includes the, ho the whole body of uh, business people, traders, professionals, lawyers included, and doctors, you find that there are only 20 lakh people in this country who declare uh, voluntarily an income more than 5 lakhs a year. Now, this is something which is absolutely incredible. And therefore, the fact that more and more people have to be tempted or incentivized to get into the tax net is one of the factors which is responsible for this uh, tax policy which is reflected in a lower percentage of tax uh, in the, in the 5 lakh and less category that by paying almost very little or negligible amount of tax, uh, you can enter the tax net. And obviously, the, in a, in a non-compliant society, the state needs resources. And uh, the resources uh, will have to come uh, from the more affluent as far as the tax structures are concerned. There is a social equity also behind this. In terms of... Uh, uh, the corporate tax, I, have, I had earlier announced that it would be linked to the phasing out of the exemptions. Now, phasing out exemptions ahead of the time itself may create a problem because people have planned their industries in that manner. But this concession that we've made for 96% of co the companies, which is the MSME plus sector up to 20, up to 50 crores of uh, turnover, is dehorse that phasing out of the exemption. And the data analysis by the Department of Revenue clearly shows that uh, this is a segment which is still paying over 30% if you include the surcharge. The average of the big boys who haven't got the benefit of this is that they are in any case paying 25% or less. And therefore, there is a rationale without the phasing out of the exemptions to restrict uh, at the present moment this reduction to those who were effectively and de facto paying 30% and above, and not those who were in any case paying 25% or less. So there was uh, an important rationale as far as this is concerned. The last point before I uh, uh, leave enough time for an interaction is this entire uh, debate on political funding. We tried one experiment earlier by saying that if you donate by check, the donor gets uh, a deduction as an expenditure, and the political parties, if they file their returns, also get exempted from uh, payment of tax. This has only marginally worked. Some part of the political donations have started coming by check, but that's only a small percentage. The bulk of it still never came by check. And therefore, our consultations with a very large body of people revealed that for good reason, the donors uh, wanted to donate tax-paid clean money for a political system. After all, in a parliamentary democracy, elections are a part of democracy. Political parties are a part of democracy. So we've devised a system by which uh, there is some element of confidentiality involved, but the money becomes absolutely clean. You can donate money to or contribute money to a political party by check. You'll be entitled to a deduction. 
we would like to incentivize people to give small donations in very large volumes through the digital mode. That's what's happening in other democracies in the world. I think that's a mode which requires to be encouraged. Election Commission suggested that uh, reduce cash donation from one source to 2,000. We accepted that suggestion. If the Election Commission has any other suggestions, we are quite open to considering it. And lastly, this whole concept of electoral bonds, which can be purchased from the notified bank under the scheme, and the notified banks would uh, sell these bonds against cash, against check payment or digital payment only. So it will be tax paid clean money on which these bonds would be purchased. The donor knows who he has donated or given this money to. Every political party will have to notify one account to the election commission. Within a very short period of time, which will be notified in the scheme, it will be days, not months. These would be redeemable only in that account of a political party. So in the hands of the recipient, it will be clean money. In the hands of the donor, it will be tax paid money. Now a question has arisen, uh, why don't you disclose everything? Now the tragedy of this country is that uh, there are a large number of uh, so-called well-meaning people who have a problem for every solution. And therefore, Disclosure would again mean going back to the status quo. And that status quo hasn't worked. And therefore, this new scheme is being experimented. And I hope if anybody has any suggestions uh, to improve upon this scheme, we are always willing to consider it. But I don't think going back to the existing status quo, which hasn't worked, is really an answer. And therefore, I do hope that consistent with our stand that we want clean businesses, we want uh, people to get rid of black money and therefore out of the electoral system we try and eliminate uh, black money. Uh, this is a very important step which has been taken in this budget and I do hope it's a step uh, which deserves to be tried and I have not the least doubt uh, that if one or two elections are contested on this particular pattern, we'll see a significant amount of clean money getting into India's democratic elections itself. That's all I had to say in, the, in my opening comments. I think we'll leave the rest for interaction.